Welcome to Tailoring Talk with Roberto Rivera, your beacon in bespoke tailoring and menswear design. Here, it's not just about crafting custom clothing and footwear, it's about unlocking your potential through style and enriching personal development. Dive into inspiring stories with self-starters and innovators, gathering insights to elevate your own journey. Support me by subscribing. If you can, leave a quick rating or review. It helps immensely. I'm joined today by a trailblazer in the male-dominated construction industry. Beyond breaking barriers with her thriving startup, she has turned personal adversity into a powerful narrative of resilience and empowerment. Known for her authenticity and humor, she's not just surviving, she's leading the way for others. A passionate entrepreneur, author and mother, she embodies the spirit of turning trials into triumphs. Get ready to be inspired by her journey of overcoming and succeeding against all odds. Tailoring Talkers, let's welcome Chelsea Pusson to the show. Chelsea, how are you? And did I just completely botch up the pronunciation of no. your name? You're good. Chelsea Hewson. You're pretty close. You're, Hewson, pretty, you're doing Hewson. pretty good. Yeah. Hewson. It's it's a hard one. Thank you for having me. I'm so I know excited. You're welcome. I should have <laughs> checked that with you beforehand. Do you know, okay. earlier today, I was thinking when I was preparing my notes for you, I was like, remember to check pronunciation. <laughs> it's okay. Surname. It's the worst thing. It's okay. Bodge it up. But anyway. I give my husband a hard time. I'm like, really? Everyone. My maiden name was Hunt, H-U-N-T, and it was so easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, gosh. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> I bet you have to spell. I bet you have to spell it every single time, right? Because people will be like, yeah. "Hewson, what's that? H e w s o m e." They like, call no. yeah. They say all kinds of stuff. You're like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> there you go. Anyone who's dating out there, just check your prospective husband or wife's no, husband's right. name. <laughs> or wives, because you know people do take. Yeah, you know, weed them out. Uh, be like, oh, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> Yeah, this isn't going to work just on the fact basis that I have a really simple surname already. Uh, anyway, sorry, this started off really bizarre. Welcome uh, to the madhouse. Um, Thank you. Chelsea, so um, first of all, when we first connected, I was like, yes, I can I can swap some stories with her because although I'm not hang, kind of, I've experienced it secondhand in the construction industry because mm-hmm. I think probably there's little difference in the attitudes of males in the construction industry, no matter which side of the pond you're on. Mm -hmm. My wife has project managed our house build. So Mm -hmm. she's been dealing with this thing from being in the ground all the way to, you know, the the finished thing that you see kind of behind me through the camera. Right. Um, And Oh my God, the things that I've witnessed, it's absolutely (laughs) crazy. I mean, if Mm -hmm. I'm, I try to take myself out of the process or out of meetings as much as possible, because Mm -hmm. as soon as there's a guy there, they assume that you're the boss and you're the one that has all the Mm -hmm. answers. In reality, she knows the kind of building code inside and out, backwards and forwards, up and down. Technically, she is so, so amazing. And me, I'm a dummy, (laughs) like a complete dummy when it comes to building. So, uh, but you know, guys, if I was happened to be in a meeting, they suddenly just ignore yep. her completely and just focus directly on me. And I'm just like, yeah. well, what the hell are you talking to me for? She's the boss. <laughs> um, and then they think that I was joking. Um, yeah. Until they realize, like, no, she really, yeah. Talk to her. I don't know what, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what, what got you mm-hmm. into construction in the first place? Was this something that you just always had a passion for as a, as a little girl growing up? Or no. <laughs> you fell into it. Definitely not. So, um, yeah, I just, I was not playing with Barbies. Like I want to own a construction company someday. Definitely not when I was a child. And I never, I truly never had the urge to even own my own company. So I'll start with that. Um, so I have a Spanish degree and a broadcast journalism degree. I thought I was going to be the next Barbara Walters. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go into broadcasting. This is going to be great. Then I found out they make 20 grand and work nights and weekends for like ever. And the likelihood of making it to be Barbara Walters is like nothing. And um, I was like, well, that sucks. I don't want to do that. 
So I got both degrees. I had to do, I'm from a small town in South Dakota. So I had to move to, uh, or I moved to Colorado to do my internship. And so I did that. And then I ended up staying in Denver. And then six months later, my, the bills were coming due for my loans. I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh God, I got to get a job. So I took a job as like a temp staff at a temp staffing agency. And I would just do random receptionist work for all these companies downtown. And, um, one day a lady said, you know, Hey, my sister has this company. They're hiring receptionist. She wants to meet you. So she, she met me, she hired me and I worked at like a trade show experiential marketing company for about five, six years, started as the receptionist, worked my way up through the company. And then it, I remember one day I was in yoga, I was at yoga and it was, uh, I had a show in New York going on and I had my cell phone next to me, like in the yoga studio, I was like so stressed out. And I was like, cause this driver was lost and this show, you know, we're on a tight deadline. I'm like, am I really in yoga stressed out with a cell phone? And I like ran out and I had to take calls. I'm like, this sucks. So I, I just started being like, what am I doing with my life? I don't feel like I'm doing anything worthwhile, like making a difference in the world. So I quit that job. I got my master's in education and then I became a high school Spanish teacher for 10 years. So totally different reinvented myself again. Um, really loved that until the last year. Um, one day a kid called me an effing waste of space. And I was like, uh, what? Tell me how you really feel, bud. And I was just like, I looked, I remember it was like September 18th. I look over at the clock, you know, at the date and I was like, oof, this is gonna be a rough year. So I, again, was like, I don't love this. I got to get out if I don't. But what now, what am I going to do? I really have no clue. So I started applying for just random jobs and no one even, no one called me. I was like, did teaching pigeonhole me? You know, and I find weird, like I would hire a teacher in a second. They're, they're multitaskers, hard workers, whatever, but like no one hired me. So I, the only job I got offered was a office manager for a, a, a small construction company And so I took that. And then in March of 2020, I started my company. So I actually worked, I worked that other job and started building my company until, gosh, it was April of 22, I believe. So it was a while and it, but it just got to the point where I'm like, I physically cannot work this much. It's psychotic. And then, yeah, since then I've just kind of stepped in and my company, you know, I, I saw a niche I did in Denver. Like I, I got thrown into construction with that other company had like two days of training, not even full days. It was horrible. I cried a lot, had no clue what I was doing. And I learned the hard way. Um, but then all of that I learned really helped me when I stepped out and, and started my own thing. So it's been, it's been really exciting. And now I can't imagine not being an entrepreneur. I'm, I told my yeah. husband I'm ruined. I like, I can't ever work for somebody else. I like, I, I have to have my own company always. <laughs> yeah. I think for successful entrepreneurs, one of the key ingredients is resilience. Totally. Um, you know, I mean, you started your business. So just as we were coming out of the pandemic, I think around April, 2022. Um, well, uh, I started in March, 2020. Oh, so okay. oh, like wow. literally when, but I didn't, you know, I just kind of started building the company, not really out yeah. in the field yet, but yeah, I mean, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. And your your company's American GPR coring. Yep. Um now, as well versed as I am now, <laughs> having built a substantial house. Um, that sounded really arrogant. Any of my clients who are listening, I am not a that very rich. large mansion. <laughs> exactly. You are not paying me too much. Okay. I'm on the <laughs> poor side of of where we live in North London. Um, so um, so yeah, no, no prejudging. Um, but Compared to where we were last, this is a big house. Um, <laughs> and do you know it's funny, right? Over here, yeah, uh, you kind of want to play down your achievements for fear of people. Kind of, I don't know. Over here, people want to pull you down all the time. They're very, uh-huh. there's very little um, people who want to be cheerleaders. Everybody's yeah. kind of like Aww. sniping all the time. Well, I Aww. always found when I worked in America that it was the complete opposite. I mean, you know, people want you to achieve yeah Um, and you know to to do really well so yeah that's that's Mm. kind of just why i have this chip on my shoulder um so yeah so anyway as well well versed as i am in all all aspects of of building what the Mm -hmm. hell 
a do ground I do? penetrating <laughs> radar services. Yeah, I yeah. like I don't even know where to start with that. It's it's interesting. So it is so ground penetrating radar. It's called GPR scanning. It's this really expensive little machine. So well, first we work in commercial construction, okay. and so it's this little machine that you it scans the concrete. And it pretty much says like, there's something over here. There's something over here. You can safely cut here. So it shows like where things are in the concrete, mainly just for safety. And then we we got into core drilling, which is it's the circular cutting of concrete in floor or wall. So right. really like I work with electrical companies, mechanical companies, and and some general contractors. So I'll go into like a 20 story building and just, you know, scan it and cut all the holes for them. And then they come in and put what, I don't even know what uh, they put I in. Get it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's super, super random. <laughs> yeah. Cool holes. Oh, right. Okay. So like a bigger scale version of what I had to do when they were here and they were doing the extractor fan and then I had to like, yes, probably, probably. Yeah. To the other yeah. side so they could put the pipe through. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. I got it. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Actually, now that you say it, your company name is really obvious. Um, well, now, well yeah, done. but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, okay, great. Well, look, you never know because my American audience just edges my UK audience numbers. Yeah. So yeah. Um, anyone who out there who is in commercial construction and so on, uh, Chelsea's links will be in the show notes. Hit her up and see if she can, <laughs> you, you know, drill know. core holes all over your big building. <laughs> exactly. You never know. But that's not exactly what we're here to talk about because we are here to talk about how, you know, your experiences and, and you know, adversity that you've had to overcome and so on. So I, I guess if we kind of go back a little bit, sort of pre-pandemic I mean you have mm -hmm. an absolutely beautiful family now you have two sons am I right two boys yep two yep. boys yeah mm -hmm. um uh you know happily married still mm -hmm. happily married oh yeah <laughs> okay I just want to make sure because you might not have updated your website your husband's still there so <laughs> um, and um but but I, given what you uh, an incident that you have to deal with in the past mm -hmm. um I'm, I'm guessing there may have been a time in your life where you never thought you would be where you are today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's kind of two stories that come up of, of pretty intense things that I've overcome. One was gosh, like 20 years ago. I, so I, with my Spanish degree, I um, studied abroad in Ecuador and South America a lot. And um, at one point I was down there alone um, studying and I, um, like w with our university or with our academia, we would go out like when, when people were leaving, we'd be out at bars and stuff and kind of celebrating and sending them off, you know, to go back to wherever they were from. And, um, so, and I, sh I'm going to share this story really, because this is talking about 20 year old or 20 years ago, me. Right. And then yeah. I'll share another one that shows kind of how we deal with trauma differently. Um, so one night I, um, we were all at, like this bar or whatever. And apparently one of my professors that was from Ecuador at this academia, he uh, drugged me, he raped me. And I actually woke up alone in an abandoned house in by myself in South America, which is terrifying. I mean, I could have probably been killed. Um, and so really that, like I tried, to, I woke up and I was just like, Oh my God. And I'm like the night before I was extremely ill, but I'm getting like flashbacks between the blackout and, um, tried to get out of this house. I got, it was like getting electrocuted for like a half hour trying to get this door open. It was so weird. And then I, um, it, I don't know what day it was. It was a day of the week and I had school and I had, I took, I didn't know where I was. So I took a taxi back to school and had to, he was there. I had to look him in the face and I did not tell a soul for like, I just recently started telling people. So like how horrific that was and how even much worse it truly could have been. Like I shoved that down so deep and locked it and threw away the key. And it only recently I'd be laying in bed and I'm like, why would you put yourself in that situation? Why? It was starting to come back to my mind because I had like literally buried it. and. um even though, and then I was like, why are you blaming yourself for that? You didn't do that. Right. So, but I did zero healing. I 
totally pretended like it didn't happen. I didn't tell anyone, not my parents, nobody for like until recently, literally. But then, um, so then fast forward 20 years. So, um, a couple years ago, uh, I was in a lawsuit and it lasted two and a half years and, um, just being sued over the most ridiculous things for millions of dollars. And honestly, like that true, that has been the worst experience of my life, even worse than the Ecuador situation. Um, really like being attacked and living in fear and this heaviness and, I would wake up in hives. I would wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh my God, it's not a dream. Like this is real. And this is just, it was horrific. It was absolutely so horrible. And it it went on for two and a half years. So the depression and heaviness and like just the fear that I lived in every day of being attacked and having to constantly like defend myself. And I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, never even, I had all this evidence to disprove everything. Yeah. Like right here, here we go. And, um, we're supposed to go to trial and my lawyers kept saying, saying, well, you know, you're going to spend 300 grand just for trial. You know, do you, we, we really think you should settle. And I'm like, well, I don't want to settle. Like I have all this proof, you know? And at some point it was like, my kids were like, mommy, when are we losing our house? Mommy, here's our, here's $12. You need it more than I do. You know? And it was like, oh my God, like this has seeped into me. And it was just, I'm a really positive person in general. And it was like, I was not okay. And so finally I, I wrote a check to settle this madness at the end of 23, thank God. And I didn't bring it into 2024. And, but, but there were times during that, like kind of in the middle when, cause they kept like adding more just ridiculous mm-hmm. accusations. And I'm like, Oh my God, like what? And I, it was a time where I woke up one day and I was like, I'm not okay. I don't want to die, but I don't want to live I can't live like this anymore. And I don't know how I'm going to make it through. And I had to say, like, I I remember texting a friend who's a therapist and saying like, I need help. Like, I'm not okay. And so I got, you know, started with the therapist. I, I had to really look at my habits and be like, how am I taking care of myself? Because I'm struggling right now and I'm not okay. And I need to, maybe I don't need to go to all those work meetings. Maybe I don't, you know, I need to stop drinking. I need to work out. I need to get outside in the sunshine. I need to do things to actually make me feel good or I'm not going to get through this. So it was like those two times I felt so powerless and so attacked. How different, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I've done all the work and I do a lot of personal development now. So I knew how to look at myself and be like, you're not okay. You have to heal while you're going through this because it's hell and it's taking forever. Um, So it's like, it's interesting to me how like we all go through trauma and different things. Every single person you talk to there, everybody has gone through stuff. Right. And we're going to, that's like the human experience. Um, But it was so interesting to me to like, see how differently I, I, went through or dealt with those things comp- at 20 years apart. Yeah. I know some of what you're going you were going through um having been through some similar things ourselves and then mm. on the other side of it with what happened to you in Ecuador um when I was a child I suffered abuse and mm, locked that one up for a very very long time. Mm-hmm. And uh you know kind of my wife originally was the only person that I'd kind of talked talked mm-hmm. with about it. Um, and then more recently, I, I kind of started opening up on the mm-hmm. podcast and uh, and I've been on a, a guest on other people's podcasts and kind of started to open up about it as well. But it's, it's really, really tough. It is. Um, because even though you haven't done anything wrong, you still feel oh, like yeah. you would be judged as if you had. Yeah. Like right. guilt and shame about, or an embarrassment. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, it's sad, but a lot of people out there have gone through something like that. And how many of them are like us that we just didn't say anything for so long because yeah, what is the world going to think of us? Like, you know, it's, are they going to judge me? Are they, you know, it's, or I don't even know why we just, we're terrified, but there's yeah. so many people out there that have gone through that stuff. And then when you talk about litigation, mm, I mean, yeah. that, I mean, I'm, you know, some people would have been, would have listened to you and said, 
how could she say that the litigation thing was worse than what she went through in Ecuador? Yeah, well, it truly was. <laughs> <laughs> if you've truly ever was. been, if you've ever been through anything like that, mm-hmm. there you can definitely either equate or put one on top mm-hmm. of the other for sure. Because again, Absolutely. you know, we've we've been through um kind of similar like we haven't we haven't been sued per se but we were involved with quite a long running court case our insurers actually settled for us in the end Mm. despite the fact that from a moral principle point of view like with you all the you have all the evidence Mm -hmm. you haven't done anything wrong Mm. this has all just started because somebody decided that they were going to pick a fight with you yeah you can sue for anything apparently exactly (laughs) it's ridiculous Yeah. yeah Yeah. But it's to be attacked over and over again, like day after day and to have those feelings. That's why it like it seeps into your life and just affects you, you know, so much worse than one night, one time, you know, it it really does. Yeah, exactly. It's every second of every minute of every day because it is literally it becomes part of who you are. It does. And you don't want it. You just want it out. No. Yeah. So, you know, and then I guess at some point you have to kind of either say to yourself or you know you have that realization because your boys are saying to you are Mm -hmm. we going to lose our home Mm -hmm. you know they're giving you 12 bucks and saying you Mm -hmm. need it more than we do Mm -hmm. um and you have to kind of ask yourself look you know I don't want to live like this no I need my life back I need my life back I don't want this to be my story what do I need to do hold my nose what do I need to do to make this stop Yep. No matter what it takes, right? Yep. Because life yeah. is too short. It is. I don't, I can't live like that. Two and a half years, like that's a long time to live in that heaviness. I I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing that that experience now, I mean, it was very, very recent. So recent. it's still, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. What lessons, I mean, other than what we've just talked about, but how, how, how can you use what you've been through? Mm-hmm. Because you've got a lot on the horizon now, because obviously you've mm-hmm. got the business, which is thriving. Mm-hmm. Um, you're doing a lot of work outside of that in terms of networking and public speaking to yep. inspire, encourage, um, and motivate the other women around you, mm-hmm. whether it's the next generation or others of the same. I'm really sorry. So you know what my Bengal's doing? So before we started recording, Chelsea and I had to contend with delaying our recording because my Bengal's gone absolutely apeshit crazy. She's now managed to get into the server cabinet. Oh, She's actually funny. managed to get all the way, and that is set right the high top. up on the ceiling. Yeah. She's actually managed to open the door. It was unlocked, to be fair, but she's managed to open the door, get in there, and she's now pulling network cables out oh, of... That's great. Yeah, where they that's belong. That's great. <laughs> Do you do you, do you fancy a Bengal cat? No, I'm I'm good. My you're good. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. But thank you. Okay. Maybe a snack. For <laughs> My your husband's dog. allergic. <laughs> a really, she's hypoallergenic. Oh yeah, no, they still. I'll I have ship a dog. her over. To, I'll might. ship her over to you if she survives the the journey yeah. to Colorado. <laughs> Oh my God, she's just doing my head in right now. Um, <laughs> so uh, so yeah, sorry. Back to um, company. You have a book coming out. Mm-hmm. in days like we're days. recording on a friday your book comes out on monday yep as as you have all of these things on the horizon you know kind of what are the biggest sort of takeaways for you in, mm-hmm. in turn or, or how would you protect yourself yeah from anything possibly just <clears throat> coming at you well it's it's weird like i mean let's fingers crossed no one i mean i've never been sued before and then there's this one time i hope to god no it never happens again um but I'm like you said, I, I kind of have a chip on my shoulder now. It, it pissed me off. Like, let's be, yeah. it pissed me off. Like, oh, you're trying to ruin me. Mm-mm. Nope. It's not going to happen. Now I'm going to go out and kick more ass. And mm-hmm. like, I don't like, I, I didn't, you know, you were saying all these things about me and making me seem like, oh, you think she's smart enough to run that company by herself or, oh, she's just a Spanish teacher. Like, really? Yeah, actually, I am smart enough to run this company. I've built it and run it myself. All this other stuff, right? So now I'm going out like, I'm going to go out and kick even more ass than I already had planned because like just to show everybody who doubted me, right? And, you yeah. know, I, and I do have a lot of support, but so it's really like, and and with the, my book, so I never wanted to be an author. I had zero thoughts of writing a book, to be honest, Um was not on my bucket list at all. And I went to this, I'm in a women's entrepreneur group and I went um, 
to a event once and this woman in Denver, she's, she owns a publishing company and she was talking and I'm like, Oh my God, I love you. I love your energy. Like, so I chatted later and I'm like, I feel like I could do this. And at that point I had zero clue what I would even write about. So let's put that out there. Um, Mm. and she and I started talking and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And honestly, I had zero direction for a book at all. And I just sat down and started writing and all of these stories, all it's just a bunch of short stories that kind of poured out of me of things that I've overcome in life. So, you know, I, I mentioned two of the more kind of traumatic, the more intense yeah. ones, but there's other stuff too. And it's really meant to inspire people to own their stories. It's okay to be real and raw and vulnerable because other people appreciate that. And other people are going through the same kind of, maybe not the same exact thing, but something similar. And they need somebody to share that. So they know they're going to be okay. Yeah. Like when, when you're in it and it's re- the real bad times and it, you feel like that could break you, I want to inspire people to say, it's not going to break you and you will get out, you will get out, but you got to work to get out and you got to take care of yourself and you got to do the healing. But it's like, that will propel you to what you're meant to do. You will come out stronger. And for me, it's like going through all this stuff and then writing this book. I truly feel like now this year, you know, my message is to talk to women, to moms, to entrepreneurs, to busy people, you know, juggling it all, be real. Life's not, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it, but I try my best. And I, you know, I share things that have worked. I share things that are funny stories of crazy crap my kids have done. You know, I, I share it all, but, and I also share how I've overcome some of this stuff so people can feel seen and connected and not alone because we, a lot of us don't share when we're going through those hard times. So that's kind of now through going through all of this in life and then writing this book, I kind of feel like that's my mission in life now is to share and just be real and say, you know, say I'm a hot mess. And, you know, my, so my book is called real vibes only unapologetic confessions of a hot mess mompreneur. If that sums it up, I mean, let's just be real here and just throw it out there. Cause I know people feel the same. But that is so important, especially in this day and age. I'm so sorry. I keep looking. I am totally attentive. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm just kind of worried any moment that whole thing's going to come crashing <laughs> down. She's really going to town on it up there. Um, there you go. New piece of core hole equipment for yeah, you. Yeah, right. You will clear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... <laughs> In this day and age, Chelsea, that is what you're doing is so, so important. Thank you. Because everything that is put out there, not just social media, but the media in general, is all it it, is either designed to. I mean, I guess people just feel bad about themselves no matter what, because the news is either just the worst things that are going on. Death and destruction, I call it. It's horrible. Death and destruction. I can't even watch it. (laughs) Or, hey, you should be like this or you could achieve this, mm-hmm. but you can't really the unattainable yeah. perfection, yeah. which doesn't yeah. exist. No, people are ruining themselves over it mentally, physically. Yes. It's all going on. It's horrible. Not enough people. People are going through things and they keep quiet about it. They don't want to they don't want to talk about it. And that's absolutely fine. Anyone who's listening right now to us and is is in that camp, that is absolutely fine. Totally fine. But we need more of us need to stand up and mm-hmm. tell our stories yeah. um, in order to just give hope to those people, like you said, that, sure. that things can be OK, that you can own your mm-hmm. story to inspire yeah. them to look at their own situations and, and mm-hmm. hopefully f- help them to figure it out. Right. Yeah. And it's not like everyone needs to go out and share their message or write a book about it or go speak on stages. But if. And that's totally fine. If, but the, for those people, know that you don't need to feel shame and guilt ab- around it. And you can do the healing and the work and be okay for even if it's just for yourself. At the very least, know that, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, that the the authenticity that you present is amplified because there's so little of it going on, right? I think people yeah. that want to work with you, that want to that that want to want to deal with you or or build a relationship with you, whether it's commercial or otherwise, 
they they do like to see some of that authenticity because otherwise you know mm-hmm. everything you know i had people saying to me at the beginning of the uh actually, sorry just recently because this year's already we're like six weeks in this is what moving mm-hmm. house does to you it shifts your <laughs> perception of time it's crazy um yeah. people have been saying uh you know your energy is kind of different and i'm like what do you mean you haven't even seen me because i've hardly been on instagram and so on yeah and, th- and they're like no that's the point we haven't seen you like you've not been posting mm. etc and i'd be like well you know i kind of went on there and i see a lot of people who post for the sake of posting yeah right stuff yeah. and it's not really helping anyone it it comes across Mm-mm. as really self-serving and and all of that and you know when i do anything you know case in point this conversation with you mm-hmm. i'm always trying to think if i'm going to create this bit of content and put it out there is it going to help anyone? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. It needs to help one person. Yeah. And if it helps thousands, great. But if I can just help one person mm-hmm. with each piece of content, then you've succeeded. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm not inspired to do that yeah. because I'm not feeling well in myself or I'm going yeah. through stuff on my own, et cetera, then, then I'm not going to do it at that point in time mm-hmm. because yeah, it's got to come. Way. Yeah. It's got to come from the right place. Yeah. I wonder if with the book because it was something Mm -hmm. that was never on the horizon for you never on your bucket list nope someone saw something in you and said they must have said to you you've got a book in you i don't know i think people people are going to read it and be like oh my god first of all i know way more about her than i ever thought i wanted to but like there i mean i think a lot of these I don't say, you know what I mean? So I think people that are close to me are be like, oh my God, I had no idea. You know what I mean? So it's that's a big deal putting it out there. But like we said, somebody needs to hear it. And I, it's just, that's my journey of life is like, apparently I'm called to do this now and here we go. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So um, so yeah, a couple of days to go. This must be really, mm-hmm. really exciting for you. It um, is. What's the plan once it's out there? Because so you've got e- the ebook version is out next mm-hmm. week. Yep. Um, and then two days later is the paperback. Oh, okay. So we don't even yeah. have to wait that long to get the physical no. copy. I like yeah, physical. it'll be out on Amazon. Yeah. 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 I do awesome. too. I'm totally a, an actual book person for sure. Yeah. So as of um, Monday, you then mm-hmm. become Chelsea Husham published author. Mm-hmm. You know how much yep. credibility that gives you? Like I... you're, it's just going to go through the roof. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, one of my recent guests, um, Annie Margarita Yang, one of my favorites, she's so awesome. Um, you know, kind of mid to late 20s, already written like two or three books, I think. Wow. Um, you know, she, she she said that the amount of credibility you get when somebody finds out that you're an author or that you've published mm. a book or two, um, and it's it's because it shows some staying power it shows you've got guts and gumption and that you can actually mm-hmm. take a task and start it and actually finish it because writing a yeah. book is a big deal i've heard only like one percent of people do it which i kind of find surprising because i'm now i now have all these new author friends and i'm like oh my god i have like 30 books that i bought of theirs to read <laughs> yeah. in my free time but uh like it's so cool so it's weird to me that i have all these new author friends that are they're freaking amazing people and so cool mm-hmm. and inspire me and but it's like only 1% of people do this it's weird but it's yeah it's it's cool to meet the people that share their stories and put it out there and i feel like most when i go to conferences when i'm reading books it's really just people sharing the things they've been through Truly, and how they've gone through it in all different, all completely different. But we're just sharing stories and how we've been human and get through it. As you really got into writing and you were starting to get into kind of flow with these things, and the stories mm-hmm. were starting to come back in your mind, and you were getting them out onto paper. Mm-hmm. What was that like for you? I don't want to put words into your mouth, but what mm-hmm. was that process like for you? Yeah. So I. I started like I have an office at home and I, you know, I'm very busy running a company, but I would take my laptop and go to a coffee shop and be like, okay, for these two or three hours, I'm going to bust writing out. This is what I'm doing. So I kind of get, I try to change my scenery. Mm. Um, and it was really, it was kind of a healing process in itself. Cause I cried a lot writing it. 
I, you know, certain stories, I'm just sitting there like sobbing, writing it. And even when I, I've read the book now like five times and I, um, to, you know, for edits and things, and I still sit and cry, um, at some stories or I, you know, hopefully people laugh a little, cause I do a lot of, I've done a lot of stupid shit in my life. So hopefully it gives a little laugh. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was really almost like healing and like going through some of these things and like putting words to it you know, um, things that I've maybe thought or felt in life, but now it's like a concrete thing out there. And I had to like process through it a little more, which, so it was a really, it was a unique and really cool experience. I, I, I liked it. I didn't, you know, when I, it, it, I had to bust it out and make time for it, but I wasn't like miserable writing. You know, I feel like in the movies you feel like, Oh my gosh, I'm writing a book. It's, you know, this whole like horrific thing, you know, and their whole life goes on hold. So I was, it fit pretty nicely in there, but it was a neat experience for sure. Yeah. I mean, I I imagine for you, it was probably a little bit more like, because you weren't writing a, you know, kind of book book. It was more memoir, right? Because you're telling stories from your life and so on and sharing your experiences, I guess, with the the goal of, of inspiring the reader, helping Mm -hmm. the reader. I was going to make a really awesome point and it just literally was zipped out of my brain. <laughs> Great. Dang it. That, that happens. happens to me all the time. I know. It's crazy. And it's not going to come <laughs> back. Um, okay, fine. So we'll park that one. So before I let you go, I need to try, I promise the listeners that I'm going to try and sp- sprinkle a little bit more clothing talk in here. Yes. Now, the photo shoot for your website must yeah. looks like it, you had a lot of fun. I did. I did. But it also looks super natural for you because I'm guessing day job, you can be in, uh, I'm guessing you live in jeans when you work. Um, there might or be yoga high... pants. Or yoga I mean, pants. Okay. Or sweatpants. I mean, when when I'm working at home, it's not glamorous sometimes. <laughs> okay. Are you, ever on, are you ever on site these days? Sometimes um, I do have my boots and my construction or my hard hat in my car. So if I'm driving and I see a site I want to be on, I'm like, I veer over and I I go on there and put on my vest. So I always keep that on my car to do that. But yeah, so normally if I'm working at home and I don't have a meeting, it's pretty ridiculous. (laughs) Sometimes the pajamas are into 2 p.m., you know, but yeah, yeah. but the photo shoot was, yeah, it's definitely not what I wear every day. Yeah, but you, it looked like you could wear that every single day because you. you look so comfortable. Thank you. Um, so outside of yoga pants, high vis vez, <laughs> and uh, sight hats, <laughs> yeah, Chelsea. Imagine your husband is taking you on a date, yeah, and he hasn't told you where you're going, but he's just said we're going somewhere nice. Yeah. What does Chelsea do? What's your kind of style inspiration? What's your mm-hmm. in terms of favorite outfits? And so, what's your kind yeah. of go to for <clears throat> um, you know, wow factor? Okay. So I, I've, um, after talking with a brand strategist, this, a girlfriend of mine now really kind of to go along with the book and, and this is just me anyway, but it's, we're kind of throwing it out in the world now is bold. I love bright colors. I'm, you know, like I said, I'm energetic. I'm a positive person. So like lately I've been wearing blue, um, like blue little suit short things. I don't know what you'd call that a little suit short things um like hot pink pants with like a black little you know a black little top with some yeah. some really cool shoes my um wearing like blue with gold boots that my book cover so just trying to just be bold comfortable but out there a little bit and yeah like I want to feel like when I walk in a room people are like dang so I wore these I had an event in um phoenix last week and i wore these hot pink pants and literally you can hear as you're walking around people like oh my god i love those pants yeah. oh my god and you know they're like Duh. and then some people just say it about you and you hear them and others are like say it to you right but it's it's like that bold unapologetic here i am you know what i mean it, but stuff you feel good in but yeah. that's kind of the vibe i'm going for now yeah i love it it really suits you as well thank like, you now that i've thank got you. to get to know you Mm-hmm. I can definitely put the the two things together. So your Thank um you. branding consultant has done a great job because Thank there you. is that I will let her know. Yeah, right. Consistency. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really excited for you. 
like genuinely Thank you. um Thank you. so i will uh, because by the time this episode goes out in a couple of weeks time the bo- book the book the book will be mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. so i'll make sure that i have a link to your website thank you um and i will also have the relevant amazon links etc for the book as well so thank you. those listening can go check it out real vibes only unapologetic confessions of a hot mess <laughs> mompreneur did i get that right yeah yeah good job t- told you i was listening <laughs> where else can people connect with you chelsea um, so yeah, my website, Chelsea Um, I'm probably most active on Instagram, just Chelsea Hewsome. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as well there. That's kind of more my construction vibes. So if yeah. you're feeling that vibe, go there. Instagram is more like life. Like here's my kid doing, you know, yeah. I'm yeah. at hockey. I'm doing this and that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'll make sure I have all those links. Chelsea, thank you so, so much. Have you had fun thank today? You. I did. This was great. This was great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. And I I do apologize for my zoo of a household. Um, (laughs) They're all crazy. Um, (laughs) Hopefully the the Zoom background noise blocking thing did its job. Um, Chelsea, thank you. I'm I'm so glad that we met and the universe has connected us together. And as I say, good luck with the book launch next week. Let me know how things go. Anything that I can support you with from same to uh, you. over here, just let me know. Okay, same um, to you. I appreciate that. Yeah. However, I awesome. can support you too. Thank you. And speaking of support, you lot, thank you for joining us. Remember, you can join the Tailoring Talk community on Instagram at Tailoring Talk Podcast. And I'm all years, all years, all ears for your feedback. <laughs> so email me at tailoringtalkpodcast at gmail.com. If you've enjoyed our conversation, please subscribe, leave a rating, and so, so important, share this episode with anyone you know who might find what Chelsea shared inspiring, or they may be in need of this conversation uh, with whatever it is that they're going through in their lives. And if you want to support the show further, you can check out the link in the show notes. Every bit of support means a lot and means I can keep helping you by tailoring these amazing conversations. Have a great week. Be good to each other and I'll see you on the next one.